So earlier, as I was saying, I already created the server in these components. I just went through and I created two servers that were just named uh, Fluffy Server, and there's a little timestamp. And they are my uh, one, two, fifteen, oh four, one game machines. Sorry, John, sorry, uh, in the Dallas uh, uh, data center. When I had these two machines, I was given their IPs. I can see them from uh, Shield, St. Mount, uh, Shield Keys. I can see my, uh, these are my two machines, the new IPs. So that iterates, like, so if you have three machines over two providers, or go to both providers, you get both of them, or three? This, so this script, this little example script for this talk doesn't do that, but very easily um, it could be adapted. Right next, right now there's a config file that drives this. Um, if I open up, you can see my, all my credentials. So, but uh, it just says for if you're running under the, the Rackspace providers, mm -hmm. use these Rackspace credits. If you're running under EC2, use these Amazon credits. And it will be able to just do the same thing. But when there's, if I added a couple of things in the loops to say look at multiple providers, mm -hmm. it would see what do you have across everybody. Hey, Rebecca? Does somebody have to pay somebody? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, to set up the server to have this space or? Um, so, it would be a, so I, who's, you would have paying who? I, I would be paying MySpace for this, okay. but since they're already paying me, they just give me the access to it. But if you had your, if so, you had your MySpace account, your Amazon account, or whatever, you would just plug it in, pick it off the server, and you just shouldn't get a bare Ubuntu server. And then, however, however you want to do, go ahead and actually use that as. What if I'm just using it for development purposes? Do I really have to pay, or is there something that? Help me out with that. <laughs> so, with the Python Foundation. With the Python yeah. <laughs> That's a very good question. And Rackspace, this is our the only business plug I should do here. Um, Rackspace currently has a we call it the developer tier. Um, Fifty dollars a month for six months will give you credit to play with, uh, just to just play with and do some of this stuff uh, with Rackspace. Um, Test their apps out, deploy your stuff there, play around with it. Um, Fifty dollars a month is, is pretty good because you could deploy a couple of machines. I actually don't remember exactly what you could do depending on what uh, size machines. But fifty bucks is not bad to you know, throw one instance of something up there and play around with it. So if you had the fifty dollar Rackspace credit, you'd be ready to just go right away. Um, I can. I have little like cards that have the details in it. I can give you guys afterwards if anyone's interested. Or if, if you just go to it's developer.ragspace.com slash dev trial, sign up and you get six months of discounted that the first fifty dollars is yours. So thank you for that question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no more Rackspace plugs. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so now I have my these two servers. Uh, just to prove that they're real, and I actually did create them. Uh, let's go see what's on. Actually, let's not, because if I give you these IPs, they're going to be just you're going to hammer them. We should really put it behind a load balancer first. It's a very logical thing to do. I don't want you guys to take down my servers with all this crazy traffic. So that's a big crowd here. It's something you hear to tweet it, and every hacker news is going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> So I've already created nodes. Um, in libcloud, there are abstractions for compute, which is all the nodes, uh, node stuff, uh, DNS, um, object storage, and load balancing. So we already did the uh, compute stuff, do some load balancers. Um, very simple, all I do, um, create a load balancer, just I need to give it the members of the load balancer, which are the IPs that I just put up there. And again, I've already done this because I would have failed uh, a lot down. <laughs> um, so I have these two. You can see 98.129 and 198.161. Um, and I would just 
just call my create load balancer function, which very simply just creates those members, sends it to driver.createBalancer. Again, driver.createBalancer could be Rackspace, it could be Amazon, it could be software, it could be whatever provider it might have. Um, obviously, if you're going to create a load balancer, it probably should be with the servers that are in that same driver. I, I, I'm not sure, not even sure what would happen if you were to do mix all kinds of stuff up. But. Whatever you do, make sure you send it over HTTP from behind the load balancer over the public internet to the other provider, right? Of course. <laughs> just watch the money just fly out of your bank. Um, so I, there's a show load balancers. I've already done the create load balancer, and very simply, it just takes those two IPs. So I just have a load balancer at this IP um, that has those two servers behind it. Um, if I purchased a domain name for this demo, I would have shown you a, a DNS thing, but very simply I would just point it at, my, set my uh, record to point to that, and I would just go to coolclubbydemo.com, and you would see my load demo. Instead, we'll just go straight to the key. And, <laughs> and of course, a demo must be complete with GIFs. So I have one of them, this is from, someone said this in our IRC earlier. It just says, LOL, hi, puppy. Another, so the other, these are just the two machines bouncing back and forth. Ron Swanson, get some bacon. Here again, get this guy. <laughs> so, my machines work, load balancer works. We're all in, uh, it's all good here. Um, the load balancer, uh, I just created it with algorithm.roundrobin, just a simple, there's no, I don't need anything fancy here. Um, could do any, I think, last time I talked about this, I forgot to. Uh, there are like five or six different little balancer um, algorithms in there, the ones that work on all the different providers, uh, all the different weighting and stuff like that. Uh, very simply, I have my, my nose, I've created my load balancer, I've done my <coughs> key pairing stuff. So, for the very basic demo, everything's good. And, you know, this, it's fairly simple to, to write this, to, to work with this, but my super cool, uh, my Flask Fight Shed app. Uh, I just got one. What's that? I was just going to ask, what color is the bike? <laughs> <laughs> so that too is set up in the same way. There are two machines running this this app, and they're both behind a load balancer. And it is available at bikeshed.io. Uh, and I just figure out what the uh, color of the bike shed is. It's not teal yet, so Ernest is wrong. And if you actually want, there's the raw, just the API, function.io slash API slash D1.0 color gives you the answer to a problem. So how much would it cost me to pay, or how much would it cost me to pay you to like have this lean towards teal? Uh, <laughs> um, I'll have to figure out. Well, be, be, it, now, now, you're, now you're actually uh, monetized. So, that's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that could be a, a new Rackspace product, is Flash as a service. I'm trying to figure out the platform as a service stuff, we have this already built. Could be OpenStack, nice thing. Um, yeah, so it's a really basic demo just of creating servers, adding a load balancer, setting up queue pairs and stuff. Question? Yeah, are all of those uh, load balancing algorithms, are, the, are all those part of LibCloud or the Imported from somewhere else. They're just kind of a, little, a thin abstraction on top of what the various providers uh, support. So for like Rackspace, you're going to you're going to pass some certain string into your request, and then this uh, algorithm dot load balancer uh, dot uh, <coughs> uh, yeah algorithm dot round robin on a Rackspace one. It, Correlates the right thing on EC2, it does, or whatever, not EC2, whatever Amazon load balancer stuff is. Um, 
it's just exposing whatever the, the provider is expecting. Yeah, because none of this is all just straight <coughs> abstractions of the provider's API. It doesn't actually, there's not a whole lot of guts. I, I would like to like dive into code and show you all kinds of fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, for the most part, there's the core, the base classes of what the compute should do, and it's that you should be able to create a node, delete a node, update a node, add uh, block storage, remove block storage, very simply, and then each of the providers handles their own, you know, it's making the various API calls over um, just to create new resources and keep stuff back. So there's, there's not a lot of super hard tech stuff to show off, because it is simply wrappers around all these other APIs. Not to make it seem like it's a dumb project or anything like that, it's, it's pretty cool stuff, and it's making pretty easy to use various providers at the same time. So what we need to use like the you know, provider's API for like what stuff is like not included look a uh, bit. You might have to get more like more specific on with their APIs. So one thing that I'm trying to fix in the Rackspace stuff to make sure you don't have to do that is um, for example in the Rackspace um, side of things, block storage uh, does not work. So actually going to step back for a second. So Rackspace is one of the providers that is built on top of OpenStack. And so OpenStack has uh, the core Nova compute API has a bunch of extensions. One of those extensions is volume extensions. So you can create block storage, you can create and create that and associate that with your compute resources. Rackspace only works with, as far as block storage, the Cinder. Uh, APIs which are different than these extensions. So, for example, right now, if you create a Rackspace uh, node, you cannot create block storage, and you have to create the block storage via the Rackspace APIs, or perhaps Pyrax, which is another thing. And then you can associate them, but you can't create them. That's something we're working on right now to fix to make it so you can switch out your block storage. So you could either use Cinder or you could use the, the Rackspace extensions. Um, that's one thing I'm directly aware of. Um, I think with other providers, I don't have any specific examples of the other providers, but I don't know. I assume it's just the differences, but I don't know why. I, I, I only use the simple parts. All the simple parts, so the, the creating server, deleting server, like once you go outside of that, that's where it becomes the, the thing I kind of show with the, um, the key pairs, where all of the attributes or function names are ex underscore, but it's extensions. So like for key pairs, pretty much everyone supports those, but a lot of people don't. So they're not part of the core kind of compute API. Um, so the ones who have contributed to have their key pair stuff, like the Rackspace one or OpenStack one, that's there. But if you go to XYZ provider and they, they have key pairing, but they don't have it in there, you try to get it in there, or you have to go through their, their API. Just use your PS result. Yeah, exactly. Just test right. Save them plain test. No pad, no any monitor. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one. Is this what runs something like Apache's Word? Um, I just know that it's in Python, and then that's why I stop reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Um, I know a bunch of other Apache projects use other Apache um, cloud abstractions like this. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to think of what other Apache starts to ask. That whittles it down from the hundreds of that Apache projects. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple other Apache projects use uh, J Clouds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Java ones use J Clouds. Word could be using Good Cloud. I'm not. I'm not too familiar with Word, so I'm not sure. But okay. uh, uh, according to Ernest, I was told that uh, if anyone uses Salt, I guess Salt Cloud uses Lit Cloud. Yeah. Uh, some other configuration. Stuff does use it too. I think I thought I had. I think Ansible might. When did Lib 
cloud drive push, it started getting pushed up by the eye? Because it didn't used to be. Um, I'm not actually sure when it started getting added. It's for a while it was just a point. It was only like an Apache, like it was <coughs> they just did Apache stuff, and it's been more widely yeah. used. Uh, it's get the current version number. All right, let's go back to page. It's go back like thirteen point two. Thirteen. Okay. Oh, thirteen two. So zero point one four is right around the horizon. But that's actually going to that's going to be like the one point It's been production ready. It's been for quite a while. It's been around for I think close to three years now, maybe perhaps a little longer. Um, it was developed inside of a company that I'm drawing a blank on. Um, the guy who works on it, one of the creators of it, worked at Rackspace for a while, um, built up the open stack and Rackspace support, along with a couple other providers. Uh, he left, a bunch of other people had been contributing, so it kind of grew into supporting. Everyone wanted to get their stuff in there, and it supports. Um, should just bring it up. It's not not going to know that I want to have my head. I want to pass it. So for something like uh, okay. compute, which compute is the, the, um, the part of LibCloud that has the most support. <laughs> not going to be directly over there. You're done. Ricky <laughs> Byer. Uh, if anyone wants to try to count this big list, that's all the people who are not people, uh, providers that are supported under the uh, computes APIs. Um, for I'll leave it that one. Yes. That's really weird because they haven't actually launched that yet. Which they haven't one? launched the compute. All right. He was pointing out DreamHost. I knew I'm going to dream host, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even exist yet. That's kind of funny. It's ready. It's top secret. It is. Um, actually, yeah, no, You're sorry. not going home tonight. <laughs> now, now you know. Yeah, just like two days ago. Two days. Yeah, so it's been around for a while. It's, it has pretty good support for Amazon, Google, Backspace, OpenStack, um, a handful of others are pretty well supported. A couple others are kind of loosely in there, just probably just to get in someone's basic basic needs to create a server, delete a server, do something simple. Um, if anyone uses other providers that are not, actually any provider, would <coughs> love to have you take a look at it, use it, let us know what you think. Um, love to make it better, love to make to be able to make the Rackspace stuff better, but any of the APIs uh, make them grow and make it so you can use every provider from it. Uh, and it, it makes it pretty easy to use, um, obviously, Rackspace and OpenStack stuff pretty easily. But because it abstracts away a lot of that stuff, it's easy to use a mix of different providers. If you like um, Amazon S3, but you have your compute stuff and Another provider, you could just have your object storage going to S3, and you could have your compute going to somewhere else, and you could have something else running in other parts uh, fairly easily. And as the script, I kind of ran through the script a little bit quickly, but as I think you guys saw, there's not a lot of or any rack space specific stuff. I'm just creating nodes, I'm creating images from images and sizes, which are available across all those. The same thing with the load balancer. I'm creating a load balancer using two IPs. So whoever's doing the work under the hood, switch it out and a different provider does the work. So, yeah. Uh, anything else? Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for letting me talk about uh, Loop Up. Please use it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Katie. I have a question. <clears throat> is is LibCloud, uh, this might sound stupid, is LibCloud a Python library or is it, what is it? It's, yeah, it's a Python library. Okay. But the, the LibCloud itself is an API standard, right? That can be implemented in any language, right? No? No. Is it just, okay. so I missed it. Missed it. There, I believe at some point there was 
kind of the idea to make it an API standard to where there's, I think it's in the as well. But uh, yeah, and it's strictly, it's a Python. So you, you include it like any other Python library? Yeah, you would just, uh, just like at the top, uh, I have my, from loopcloud.compute.types, uh, my providers, I'm gonna make, sorry, it's kind of small, in, in odd colors, but yeah, just the loopcloud uh, package includes all the those DNS, compute, load balancer, and uh, object storage. Where would, where would we get that? Where's that available? So uh, the website <coughs> for the cloud is libcloud.apache.org. It's a kind of home page. You can install it from uh, PIP. Uh, the package in PIP is Apache. Apache it's Apache-libcloud. Yeah. Anything else? What is a libcloud.conf look like? Oh, that's so. <laughs> I'm trying to steal my credentials. A little. <laughs> it was just a, it was a little config file that just had brackets for yeah, Amazon, for Rackspace, Google, the GCD, and then I would just when I when I get my. I guess I kind of skipped over these things when I was actually doing this. Uh, so like, add, just very simply, add a key pair. I need to get a driver, which in, in my examples is Rackspace. But uh, I use, so since that can even further. So this is just a script that uses uh, uh, what's it called? hard parse. I tell each of those subcommands to just call a function with their arguments. So when I did add a key there, I just sent the name of the string and the path to where the key is, um, which comes in that args. Also in there was my, my dash p rack space from my provider. So I'm going to build a driver with my provider for compute. And that's going to go in this weirdo um, function that goes and gets, so if it's a, if we're doing driver stuff, we're going to obviously get the, uh, or, uh, the compute stuff, compute key, which is this uh, compute driver, which goes back again to what was imported. So libcloud.compute providers the driver. So I'm going to get a driver from my computer area, from my computer package. So what happens when you get a CA search unavailable error message? From where? Libcloud, the fit package. Uh, do you need to upgrade your version of OpenSSL or WK? Is that what it is? Yeah. Thanks, exactly. Ernest. He took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, what, are, what are some things I might use this for? Like, this is just a script to, like, instead of one server or something. What are some other things I can use a programmatic interface to the cloud for? Am I assuming you going to have to run this every time I get hacker news? Like, with, so one thing that would be upcoming is, uh, for the, especially for the Rackspace, Rackspace and OpenStack drivers, uh, Auto scale is a feature that uh, let's be working on soon.